first I come here as a woman on the soil. Um, I am part of State Assembly of Michigan. Um, and also I come vet it underneath ECLAWS, Laws Prevention for Government Accountability. There has been a mechanism that has been created and put in place to solve all of this. Quite frankly, Jesus Christ was our savior and he paid the debt, okay? Which made us the creditor, the man and the woman. The system as it is now has turned us in to debtors and has made the bar members in the judicial branch as the creditor. The courts make us a negative, they make their action a negative and create a positive for themselves. Now, we're into a fiduciary fraud issues. Not only on the front side, because you've created us into debtors, but also on the back side. The treasury bonds that are created off of every instrument, there is not full disclosure in telling everyone that when you go to a doctor's appointment, when there's a docket number open, it creates $16,000 immediately off of that instrument in the treasury.gov for the bonds, okay? Paper bonds. It gets issued every month forever. Isn't that enough money to secure the financial aspect of this? Our very existence creates these things. And I commend what you have done and what it looks like you're trying to do, but it's not enough. Educating the people that they have the right to initiate these things on their own um, is very essential to this. People do not understand that you have the right to do this. There's a common law. I am currently being blocked. I have filed two petitions with my state representative, with the House Speaker, the Clerk, and the Secretary of Senate. Our Constitution says we have the right of grievance to address our government. And they're stating that bar members are saying that it's not legal. It is lawful. There's a big difference. Legalese is illegal. Lawfulness is in law with the Constitution. So we need a, a complete overhaul of understanding of this system that we need to get our members educated what in law means, okay? We want to work with the current system to get it corrected and in good standing. As far as uh, the council issue, there was a Supreme Court case that was already it, um, decided this issue 10 years ago. For it to take 10 years to come to public forum, to be able to be addressed it is just not acceptable. We are the ones that are credited, okay? So there should be no blocking of counsel for any reason, for, for anything in the judicial system at all. One of the things yesterday I witnessed in court watching in Genesee County was that uh, Judge Janine Barkey had made a ruling but refused to look at the evidence that was admitted and refused to read the evidence that was admitted. And I wanna know what the Supreme Court can do when the people are denied their rights. Is the people going into Supreme Court are not allowed to have a jury court when the, uh, there are laws that say we should have a jury court but probate courts will not allow it in Michigan. I wanna know what the Supreme Court is going to do about that. These unlawful probate courts that are here in Michigan. Kent County has one here, Genesee County has one that I'm involved in, Oakland County. It's just like what happened in Nazi Germany at Nuremberg. And although they exterminated six million Jews legally, they found out at the end it wasn't lawful. Okay, and what's happening here in these probate courts is they think this is legal to void all the laws in the state of Michigan. Okay, the guardianship law 753.13 uh, affirmed by the Gessler uh, Court of Appeals law that family does come first and family does get guardianship first. But in these probate courts, they assign permanent uh, professional guardians who rob and pillage people's estates. And we have 67,000 victims in this state right now. And right now, it's in your right hand. All you need to do is sign an, an order and, and put these courts, because each one of these courts belong to you. 
They don't belong to me, they belong to you. Dana Nessel can't fix this, okay? They belong to you because you're a separation of, of the judicial system and the legal system, even though what they're doing is completely illegal. I sat there yesterday in Genesee County and watched the judge violate all the estate planning laws in Michigan and sell my mom's house of, in, in violation of state law. They gave her an illegal guardian. We had this conversation in the back with one of the guys here, nice guy, who writes the forms for the state of Michigan. Well, first of all, under the state law, 700-5306, section five, it's illegal to take away the person's health care and financial power of attorney. Okay, these courts don't mention it on the record. They don't the want to say full or partial. You walk up to the clerk and he said, Everybody gets a full guardianship. So that means that you illegally, by federal law, violate everybody's health care and financial power of attorney. Why do one? But we're living right now in a lawless state. And it's in your hand. That pen right there, you can take that home this afternoon and you can write an order and you can put all these courts on notice that if any of the court violates these laws, that you're going to arrest them. Because that's exactly what they deserve. They think it's legal, but it's not lawful. And the state laws say this specifically. It's costing the families, the litigants, all their money. My mom's got robbed for $300,000 so far in the last year, and she's been isolated in her house, and I haven't seen her in a year. Okay, and I know my state reps talk to you about this, but I'm just one of tens of thousands of cases here in Michigan where families have spent their entire life savings, 500,000, I've watched Judge O'Brien in Oakland County sit there and he's working for the other side. He's supposed to be impartial and, and sitting there and he has his cannons and the, the court is for the litigants. It's not for him. That's my court. It's our court. And that needs to be changed immediately. And it's in that pen right there in your desk. All you need to do is actually do something. And it needs to be today because the state of Michigan is bleeding to death and it's an embarrassment to the United States of America because that pen will fix this today and it's not being done. And this whole uh, Michigan task force for the elder abuse thing, it's seven months late. For the working with the representatives in the Senate, they don't even know how to write bills. They have no idea what to do. Everybody's just standing here like, well, just let these people rob everybody in America. This has got to stop. This has to stop immediately. And, and it has to stop with you. I sat down there at the Court of Appeals in Detroit. I've watched Ehrlich sit there. I've watched him come in there and he stands right there. Everything's denied. Thank you. Thank you it's, it's a, it needs to change quick. Okay. Again, I was here last uh, time as a um, uh, citizen of Wayne County. I actually won my election for a state rep candidate. So I'm running as a Republican candidate. And under Article 11 in the state constitution, we're supposed to be looking for corruption. It's a role of the state rep. I'm taking my job highly seriously because um, I have asked for uh, Mr. Hutton to help us. He is the probate administrator that um, has been there for us and he is the one that we also showed him that letter from the judge that who is mr crawford though because i need to give you a hug whoever you are i don't really know who you are but thank you because i've been sending emails out for so long i'm jody white if anybody gets my email white family of westland thank you you're the only person so far that has even tried to help us so i want to be like you i'm going to grow up and i'm going to be mentored by you before i become a state rep because that's what I'm doing, I'm working for the people. So in the meantime, I'm also videotaping everything in here because we cannot videotape what's happening out there. I'm being followed by the sheriff's department and I don't like it. They stand by me, they breathe over my shoulder, they startle me. Um, I'm just taking notes. I have been at every meeting, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday of last week in the probate court looking for any of you guys. I mean, it is a state problem right now that is happening in our Michigan with our judicial system. And we pay, we are the purse strings here. 
that you pay these people to do their job. They're under a code of conduct, and we have canons that they are violating. Um, I do want the judges to respect my family. Our property's in foreclosure. I was in here for a show cause hearing with Judge McMillan. Oh, it wasn't this beautiful building. This is when we did it with the treasurer. We were in little, some cramped little courtroom up in the circuit court with McMillan, and they had a bunch of us kettled in there hot, stuffy, and they were taking our property from us, and we're with a public administrator and he didn't pay our taxes.